name is Cherise Green and I am one of your City Walk Now hosts tonight and I want to be the first person to welcome you here online with our service. We're going to get started in just a few minutes with our service but before we do I wanted to highlight a few features that are available with you as you engage in our service online. The very first thing is that we love online service because you get to talk throughout the entire service over in the chat box. So go ahead and try it out. Let us know where you're watching from. Another feature that it's available to you is if you click the request prayer button, we'll actually have one of our hosts connect with you privately and be able to pray over whatever prayer request you might have. Another thing, if you want to connect even deeper with our church, we really recommend that you go to your app store and download the CityWalk app. You'll find sermon notes, you'll find all of the things that you need to stay up to date with our gathering. Finally, we would love for you to be able to connect with us. If you are a first time guest or you've been here for a few weeks, go ahead and press that connect button and fill out a little bit of information. We would love to get to know you a little bit better. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes, like I said. But go ahead, don't be afraid to chat in that area, click all the buttons and explore, get comfortable, and we're going to begin our service in just about two minutes.
say you got the sound Jesus name Cause me it all hard to wait to get the sound Jesus name Come on Thank you for joining us tonight on City Walk Now. My name is Asher Del Bono, and I am so excited that you're here tonight. I'm gonna to be your host, and myself and a few others, we're just hanging down in that chat box down below, and we would love to just talk with you and see how your day, your week has been going. So feel free just to hop on in, shoot us a message. We'd love to have a conversation with you. With that being said, wanna let you know about a couple of things. First, if this is your first time joining us, we are really excited that you're here and we would love to connect with you a little bit more than just the chat box down below. It's really easy to do. All you need to do is just fill out the connect card by clicking the connect button right above me, fill out some basic information and one of us will be in contact with you shortly afterwards. Also, I wanna let you know about our CityWalk app. The CityWalk app is a great way to stay connected with CityWalk Church throughout the week. You're also going to have access to a Bible as well as sermon notes through tonight's message. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get on back to worship and I'll see you guys at the end.
rejoices though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom Free, 
forever we're free. And come join the sum of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, we're free. things wrong before we do them and you still love us um, and that's just evidence of how gracious and how merciful you are and we're thankful to you for being that kind of God you're holy you're just you're righteous um, and yet you're still merciful so we thank you God for being that way for extending that kind of love to us amen thankful that you're here, whether you're watching online or you're here with us this morning. I uh, hope you're having a really good, hope you had a great last week, and I hope you're ready, specifically if you live in this area. If you're watching online, maybe you're in a place that it's actually going to be cool next week, but here uh, it's not going to be very cool. It's going to be pretty hot uh, this next week, and so uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. My family and I, we're getting ready to, uh, in not, not long, we're going to head out, just like a lot of you guys, uh, going to head out on vacation. And uh, one of the things that you do when you get ready for vacation, and, and you probably vacation based on your personality. And here's what I mean. Like when I, I get ready for vacation, because of my personality, I usually have to have like, all right, here's the projects I'm going to get done while I'm resting. Here's the, the things I'm going to do. Here's the exercise I'm going to do. And, and so I have to have lined up like, here's my checklist of all the things I want to accomplish during vacation. And it's just kind of my personality does that. But this time, this summer when we go on vacation, I've decided, you know what, I'm going to try to not do that. 
I'm going to try to rest on vacation. I'm going to try to not have a list of projects that I'm going to try to accomplish on vacation. I'm going to, and this is going to, this might hurt me. I'm going to take social media off my phone. I'm going to take my email off my phone because, man, it's it's so hard to rest when you're, man, being pulled to your phone all the time. And then I'm going to pick a couple books. So usually. When you go on, at least for me, when I would go on vacation, I would pick some books that like, okay, I'm going to learn these seven things about theology or these four things. And like, I'm going to get better at something, but I'm actually going to try to just enjoy reading. And so I picked out two books. One, my friend, uh, Chris Dowdy told me about that I had never read. And I've heard of it, obviously it was called a tale of two cities. And he said, Chris, that's the best book. It's like second only to the Bible to me. And and so I I picked that one out. But then there's another book that I'm going to read. And it's by a guy, and he's probably my favorite author in the world. His name is Patrick Lencioni. And Patrick Lencioni, he, he wrote, you know, has been writing books since probably the late 90s. And every single one of his books end up being a bestseller. And probably about 10 or 12 years ago, I had a mentor of mine that said, hey, Chris, our our group is going to be reading this book. I want you to read. And it was my first book that I'd read by Patrick Lencioni. And I I read the book because it was for some things we were doing. And after I got done reading it, I used to live in Florida and there was a place called Books A Million. And as soon as I got done reading that book, I went to Books A Million and I just went to the shelf and bought every single Patrick Lencioni book that was on the shelf because I love the book so much. And the reason that Patrick's books are so unique and engaging, if you've ever read his, his, his stuff, is the first three quarters of his books are a story or a parable, a fable. He tells a story about real life people and the stories are super engaging. And the first three quarters of the book are these stories and the chapters are short. So for guys, that that helps us keep rolling through books. And so, man, I, I, I lean into these stories. And then what he does is he takes the last fourth of the book and he takes principles from that story and, and he helps you apply it to your family, to your business, to your organization. And so, man, people love these books. And here's why I think people love these types of books is because every single one of us, doesn't matter how old you are, we're all suckers for a really good story. Teachers know this. Pastors know this. Parents know this. They know that, man, we we tell illustrations and we use stories to teach truth because every single one of us leans in to a story. If I was to say to you, hey, today we're going to take two hours and I'm going to teach you 12 principles about leadership. You'd be like, all right, dude, I'm going to lean in, but I'll know this two hours, 12 principles, and you'd have to work to lean in. But if I was to say, hey, I'm going to show you a movie about a great team or a courageous army. It's an incredible movie. And oh, by the way, in this story, we're going to learn principles about leadership. Every single one of us would lean in way more than we would lean in if it was like, okay, guys, take out your notes. We're going to do a lecture on 12 principles of leadership. And it'd be like, oh, that's tougher. Stories we lean in. And Jesus knew this. Whether you grew up in church or not, If you were to read through and you probably, even if you didn't grow up in church, you know some of the stories that Jesus told. They were called parables. And and in fact, Jesus is teaching, the teaching that we have written down from him, about a third of his teaching that we have are stories or parables. And Jesus used parables and stories to draw people's attention. And then he used those stories as windows to teach people truth. And here's something that's really unique about how Jesus used stories. He used them for, he had two goals. He had a goal for the person that wasn't really listening. So he used stories to basically hide truth from people that wouldn't care anyway. So, so people that were careless listeners that, that really were taking for granted what he was talking about, he used stories to hide truth. And so they would hear him tell a story and they'd be like, oh, it's just Jesus telling another story. And they wouldn't understand what he was saying and, and they would just kind of go along their way. 
But then he also used stories for people that were sincere listeners. And he used those stories to teach people that were truly leaning in truth that they might not understand if he hadn't told it to them in a story. See, Jesus, and if you read through Mark, and it's specifically where we're going to be today in Mark, you'll see that Jesus says this a lot. He says the word, hear the word of God. In fact, in this chapter, Mark 4, that we're going to look at, he says that he says something about hearing 13 times in the first 34 verses. And Jesus wasn't talking about, hey, did you hear that like physically? He, he was saying, hey, I want you to not just hear me physically. I want you to lean in and I want you to hear with your heart. I want you to lean into truth and I want you to obey truth. And we all know that there's a difference between hearing physically and really listening. If you don't know, just ask your spouse. They'll tell you that, yes, there's times where you're listening with your ears, but you're not really hearing. I hear that from my wife. She'll tell me that kind of thing once in a while. You know, once every 10 years, she'll say something like that to me because I'm such a good listener with my heart. But, but you know that. And, and Jesus knew that. He knew, man, there's crowds of people following me that are hearing me, but I really want them to lean in and hear not just with their ears, but take in the truth and really lean into it. In fact, Jesus' brother, James, who, who wrote, wrote a, a part of the Bible, he, he talked about this as well. In fact, in James chapter 1, verse 22, James says it this way. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone looking at his face, his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. And if I wasn't an idiot... The mirror that I have on my desk in my office, I would actually brought out here to show you because I was going to use it as an illustration, but I forgot it from back there to here. So pretend I have a mirror in my hands. Here's what James is saying. Same thing as big brother Jesus said. He says, sometimes there's people that hear, they hear it with their ears, but they don't take it in. And and he compared it to someone that, that gets up in the morning and looks at their face in the mirror and just quickly looks at themselves and sees that they still have dinner on their face and sees that they got something in their tooth and sees all the craziness that happened overnight and just walks away and kind of forgets about it. He says, that's what a person is who just is listening with their ears, but they're not really taking it in. But then he says this, he says, but the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and preserves in it. Someone who, who takes time to listen carefully, even if, if what they're hearing is hard to hear. Someone who really listens carefully. It says, this person will not be a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works. This person will be blessed in what he does. So here's a, the obvious question that Jesus is going to talk about, that his brother James talked about. And it's a real simple question that you have to go beyond the surface to really think about. And the question is simply this. Are you listening? Not are you hearing. Not can you hear what God's saying. But whether you grew up in church, whether you're somebody that's maybe just skeptical of faith, the question for all of us is, are we really leaning in and listening? James says, hey, some of you, man, you, you, you look at the mirror in the morning and you, you run away and you forget what you even saw because you're not really leaning in. Because people that are really leaning in, they see things clearer and they do something about it. And so the question is, man, am I listening? Am I, is this church thing and all this Christian stuff, is it just something I do? Is it a box I check? Or am I really leaning in and saying, God, I want to hear what you're saying, even if I don't love it, even if I don't agree with it all the time, even if it makes my life uncomfortable, I want to hear it so that I can do something about it. See, Jesus in Mark chapter four, he tells this story, this parable. 
And he tells this parable to help people understand the difference between someone who hears physically and someone who really listens and takes in the Word of God. And I want you, as we read through Mark 4, I I promise you, you will see yourself in this story. He talks about four types of people and four types of hearers, and you will see yourself, if you're honest, in this. He says this in uh, Mark chapter 4. He says, listen. Like, what do you mean, Jesus? Listen, lean in. Consider the sower who went out to sow. So, So basically he's saying, I want you to think about a farmer who's heading out to scatter seeds or to sow seeds. This was something extremely common. And back then, one of the ways they did this is they would, they would have like uh, something that they kind of hung on them that was full of seeds. And before they even tilled up the ground or anything, they would sometimes just scatter seeds everywhere and it would fall on the ground. And because they scattered enough seed, some of it would, would give them crops. And so he says, I want you to listen and I want you to think about the farmer who went out to sow. It says this. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. He tells us about a third. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. And it didn't produce fruit. And then he tells us about a fourth type of ground. He says this, still other seed fell among thorns. Or no, still other seed fell on good ground. And it grew up producing fruit that increased 30, 60, and 100 times. And then Jesus says this, then he said, let anyone who has ears... Hear, to hear, listen. So Jesus talks about these three types of grounds. And he's, again, he's telling a story. People are leaning in because they understand farming. This is part of their life. And so Jesus says, I want you to think about a farmer. He's, he's out, he's throwing seed and, and he throws seed on different types of ground and different things happen based on the type of ground. And the last type of ground, he says, hey, man, the, the seed, it, it fell on some good soil. And that seed produced 30, 60, and 100 times. In this society, if you got tenfold on your seed, that was a banner year. So Jesus is saying, man, when this stuff falls on good soil, you're 30, 60, 100 times. And so this is, this is way more than what would, would normally happen. And, and then Jesus says, let anyone who has ears to hear listen. I mean, have you ever been in a conversation, and we all have, and we've probably been on both ends of this conversation. You've been in a conversation with somebody and you had something really important you wanted to get across. And as you started to talk to them, they got distracted and they're uh, doing something. And you're like, hey, whoa, 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 listen, lean in. And you start to tell them and it's on your heart. You really want to share it with them. And then they get distracted again. To the point where you, you get to a spot where you are like look at them and like you might raise your voice a little bit and you're like, listen, I listen to me. For, you're kind of frustrated. And Jesus is saying, hey, listen. I, you, you really need to lean in and listen to what I'm saying. If you have ears to hear, lean in. I just told you a story that you need to hear, not just with your ears, but with your heart. Listen. After Jesus is done telling this story, he gets some time away with his kind of 12 guys. And the guys come up to him and they're like, Jesus, you remember that? Yeah, you, you like teaching that stuff. And then you started talking about some farmer. And what, what were you trying to say in that? And I don't know if Jesus rolled his eyes, if, if you were allowed to roll your eyes, if that's a sin. But if, if you were allowed to roll your eyes, this would have been a moment Jesus would have done a roll of his eyes. Because it's his guys that are close to him that he's like, dude, you still don't understand. You still don't get it. Come to him and like, Jesus, that was a great story, but we missed it totally. Like, what did you mean by that? And so Jesus says this in verse 13. He says, then he said to them, don't you understand this parable? 
How, how then will you understand all the parables? Guys, this is like the foundational stuff. If you don't get this, man, you, you ain't going to understand any of this. So you can kind of hear he's, he, Jesus probably wasn't frustrated because he's God, but we would have been a little frustrated. Like, you, come on, you got to get this. This is so foundational. So Jesus, because he's Jesus, is patient, and, and he kind of walks the boys through it. And he says, okay, the sower sows the word. So the sower, guys, I don't know if he had to get a diagram out, like the sower represents me, Jesus. It represents people like me that teach truth. So you guys got it? Peter, put, put your iPad down. You, you get that. Okay, you got that. All right, the sower is, is me. And, and guys, Andrew, can, could you guess what the seed is, buddy? Is it the word of God? Yes, give Andrew a cookie. He got it right. So the sower, the farmer is Jesus or somebody that shares truth. And the seed is the word of God. Yes, you're right. And so let's, let's go out on a limb here. John, you're my favorite. So you should get this. What do you think the soils represent? John, don't let me down here. And this conversation never really happened, but I'm just playing it up for you. Jesus, are the, are the soils the four types of hearts that people might have? Yes. Ab, that's why you're my favorite, buddy. Yes, you got it. So, okay, now we at least understand this. And so now Jesus says, let me explain to you now that we know what the sower is, what the seed is, and what the, the, the ground is, let me explain it to you. He says this, he says, in verse 14, the sower sows the word. Some are like the word sown on, on the path. When they hear immediately, Satan comes and takes away the word sown in them. So guys, remember the, the seed is thrown on the path and the birds come and kind of eat it. That represents the person who when they hear truth, their heart is hard. Their heart is indifferent to truth. And they reject truth. All right, we got that? Yes, okay. All right, this, the second one, verse 16, he says, And others are like seeds sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. But they have no root. They are short-lived when distress or persecution comes. Because of the word, they immediately fall away. So guys, this person is the person who seems to embrace truth. It even, even seems to be excited about truth when they first hear it. But because it wasn't real in their heart, they don't produce any fruit. Their life, after that initial excitement, their life doesn't show off a lot of fruit. And when things start to get tough, they just kind of fall away and, and you just don't hear much from them because they seemed excited at the beginning, but nothing really happened inside. And so they, they fell away because what they were excited about, they never really embraced. It was just some initial excitement. And then he says this, there's a third person. He says, others are like seeds sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the worries of this age, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. He says, these are the people that they physically hear the truth, but they're so occupied with the worries of the world, with their pursuit of wealth, with their pursuit, their desire for things that, that they, they know the truth mentally, but they never really embrace it because they're so distracted by all the things in the world. And then he, then he says this, there's just one more. And he says, and, and those like seeds sown on good ground, that, that fourth type, they hear the word and they welcome it. See, they, they listen with their heart and they embrace, not, not that the truth is easy, not that it's always like the, the, the most simple thing, not that it doesn't rub them the wrong way, not that it's not hard, but when they hear truth, they lean in, they listen with their heart, they embrace it. And, and Jesus says, and they produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 times what was sown. 
See, they're involved in God's kingdom and their life produces fruit beyond their capabilities. If you grew up playing sports or you're an athlete, you know there's, maybe you had, maybe you had more than one, but you had probably at least one game where you played out of your mind. Like you made every shot on the, on the court like you were shooting things with your eyes closed. But I mean, doing stuff that normally, like you know you're not as good as you played that day, but man, you were playing out of your mind. And in fact, if you played that good every game, we'd be watching you on TV and you'd be building this church new buildings because you'd be million and million and millionaire. I mean, you were, you were just on that day. But, but you would know in the back of your mind and, and probably everybody in the, in the crowd knew like, yeah, he's... Not that good all the time. But, but man, he's playing out of his mind today. Well, here, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, man, that those that, that hear and truly welcome the word, they produce fruit in their life that is way beyond their capabilities. Like they live a life that's just out of, the, out of their mind. Like they love in a way that they, they just couldn't love on their own. They're generous in a way that they would never be able to be generous like that on their own. They're unselfish. They care about people. They, they lead from a heart of, of service. They live a holy life. Their life is a picture of something inside them that is way bigger than them because they're living a life and producing fruit in their life that they have no capability on their own to do. And Jesus says, that's what happens when the seed goes out and it falls on good ground and, and that good ground produces fruit beyond the capability of that seed. He says, man, he, he, Jesus, he's, he's talking about the farmer, but he's really trying to help these guys understand it. When we really listen, when we seek to understand and obey God's word, the results in our life produce fruit beyond our ability. It's, it's those lives that look back and maybe they look back at their day, they look back at their week, they look back at their decade, and then one day they look back at their life. And when people look at their life, all they can say is only God. They, they look at someone's life and they say, man, what God accomplished for the kingdom of God in that person's life can only be explained by God, by God doing it. See, it, it really leads us back to that really important question. And it's a, it's a real simple question, but the question is simply this. Are you listening? It's very important. And, and here's why this is really important. It's important for a few reasons, but here's, here's one I want you to think about. Out of those four types of people, guess what? Probably three of them were in church every Sunday. But only one of them is going to be in heaven and had a relationship with Jesus. Which, that should, like, poke at us a little bit. Because, man, I don't know about you, but I'm not naive enough to think that, man, churches are full of people that are really followers of Jesus. You know what? Probably there's going to be a time, in fact, the Scripture says it, that, man, when, when we... It's time to, to, this thing's all over. And Jesus is going to say to a lot of people that did a lot of stuff for him, I never knew you. But Jesus, I did this, I did this, I did this, I gave this, I did this. And he's going to say, but you never listened with your heart. You did a lot of things, but you never embraced me. You never followed me. Depart from me. So the question is, man, am I listening? Am I really listening? Whether I grew up in church, maybe you grew up in church and you walked away from the church because you were hurt by the church. Maybe you've been following Jesus for longer than I've been alive. No matter where you're at, it, the question is the same for all of us. Am I listening? Am I listening? And if I'm not listening, why? Why? So, so really, it's two questions. So first, are you listening? Like, are you leaning in? Whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, at least be honest with yourself and say, uh, I'm not or I am. Just are you listening? 
But then that second question is, if you're not, why? Maybe for you, you're just like, to be honest, I just don't buy it, buy the whole Jesus thing. Maybe you're watching online and as you think about, man, am I really listening? No, I'm not really listening because I just don't buy it. I don't buy the whole Jesus thing. I don't buy all the stuff I read. I've, I've seen some people that say they're followers of Jesus that have some really crazy lives that treat people terribly. And so I just don't buy the whole thing. At least be honest. Maybe for you, it's like, no, uh, if I'm honest, I, I'm not listening too well right now because I'm pretty distracted. I'm distracted with the pursuits in my life. And man, I, I, I have Jesus and I have some faith around my life, but really pursuing a relationship with him, I'm, I'm pretty distracted right now. So I, I wouldn't say I'm listening well. Or, or maybe you'd say, Chris, if I'm honest... I'm not listening because it's really hard for me to trust God. Because maybe you've been hurt in the past. Maybe you've been hurt in family relationships. Maybe you've been hurt in in other relationships. Maybe it's been the church. You've just been hurt. And so for you, you struggle to trust people. And so whether you like it or not, you kind of put that on God too. Because you've had so many people let you down in your life that when you start to think about a God that loves you unconditionally, it's hard for that to register with you. And so you you, you kind of listen, but you don't really lean in because you don't want to get hurt like you've been hurt by so many other people. And maybe for you, you're just saying, you're honestly saying, you know what, I just, I'm not listening because I just don't trust God. And Jesus' message to all of us, no matter if we're listening or if we're not, why we're listening, his, his message to all of us is simply the same. And it's this, let anyone who has ears to hear, listen. He's saying, I I know if you read through the gospels and I hope you're tracking through Mark with us this while we go through Mark, if you read through the gospels, you're going to see people that Jesus was around that the the world, the religious world rejected that the religious world shamed and Jesus looked at those people and he leaned into them. He loved them deeply. And he said, I I don't care about your past. I don't care about all those things. I'm, I'm just asking you, would you lean in and listen, listen with your heart? Whether you've been following Jesus forever or whether you have a past that, man, you would be embarrassed to tell anybody about, Jesus says, do you have ears to hear? If so, I want you to lean in and listen. But Jesus, you don't know what I did. Or Jesus, you don't. No, 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 no. Lean in and listen. That's what Jesus is saying to us. So here's here's something I want you to think about as we kind of close this up. And I really want you to think about this. I don't want you to like let this go up on the screen and then just think about it quick and go away. But no, think about this thought. If you were to really listen to what God is saying to you, how would your life change? Not, not, I'm not talking about in 10 years. Not talking about five years ago. If you would have listened. No, right now. If you were to really listen, not just with your ears, but with your heart to what God is saying to you, how would your life change? Maybe you're here and you'd say, Chris, you're maybe watching online. You'd say, Chris, I'm not a follower of Jesus. And maybe for you, if you were to really listen and not just listen with your ears, but listen with your heart, lean in and embrace what God's saying to you. Maybe you would say, Chris, for me. It would be starting a relationship with Jesus. Maybe for you, Jesus is kind of prodding your heart right now. And he's saying, it's time. It's time for you to embrace me. It's time for you to embrace the fact that you have sinned, but I came and I died and I rose from the grave to take care of that sin so that you and I could have a relationship. And and he's saying to you as clear as day, lean in, embrace me, start a relationship with me. And if you were really listening, maybe you'd say today I'd start a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're somebody that's, a follower of Jesus. And I know probably most of the room is a follower of Jesus. There's been a time in your life where you've started a relationship with Jesus. 
What's God saying to you? Like, like what's He saying to you right now? For, for some, it might be, hey, you need to maybe change some things that you're pursuing. Maybe for some, it's, hey, it's time to go ask for forgiveness or give forgiveness. Maybe, maybe for you, it's, hey, there's a friend in your life that really needs help and, and they've been on your heart and you've been kind of avoiding it. But, but for you, if you were to do exactly what God was telling you to do, you would reach out to that friend and you would inconvenience yourself to maybe meet a need. What's he saying to you? See, I don't know what God's saying to you specifically, but here's what I do know. If you and I will listen and will obey, then we will see fruit in our life that is beyond our ability. I don't don't know about you, but do you want to get to the end of your life and have people look back at your life and say, well, they had a lot of nice things. Well, yeah, he was a hustler. Yeah, that, yeah, good guy. Or do you want people to look back and say, the world and eternity is different because he or she listened to God. And there's a bunch more people going to be in heaven because he or she listened to God. Their influence and legacy does not die with them. It will go on and on and on because they listened and obeyed God. And when people look back at your life and look back at my life, I hope that the two words that come to their mind are simply this, only God, only God could use that guy or that girl in that way. Because we knew that guy. We knew that girl. But they gave themselves to Jesus. They listened and their life impacted eternity. Let's pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed, as we kind of bring this morning to a close, I I want to ask you that question again. Are you listening? Not are you hearing. Everyone heard. If you're watching online, we all hear physically. But, but are we listening with our heart? Are we leaning into truth? And are we leaning into it with a focus of embracing it? Maybe you're here this morning and you would say, Chris, I'm not a follower of Jesus. And as I've been listening to Jesus today, as I feel him working in my heart, I, I feel, man, today's the day I need to take this step. To become a follower of Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here and you'd say today's the day. How would I do that Chris? It's real simple. You can right there where you're seated. You're watching online. Maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you're on your front porch. Right where you're at. Would you be willing to believe that you've sinned? Would you be willing to just admit that to God? Yeah I've disobeyed you God. Would you be willing to believe that when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave that he did it for you? And then with this morning, or if you're watching tonight or throughout the week, would you just turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. I want to start a relationship with you. Transform me. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you'd say, Chris, this morning, I want to do that. Just in the quietness of this room, I'm going to say a prayer out loud. And if you're here and you want to make a decision to start a relationship with Jesus, you can take my prayer, put it in your own words, and just in your heart, say it to God. You say, Chris, does this prayer save me? No, it's not a magic prayer. It's just we pray to tell God what we believe in our hearts. And it's what we believe in our hearts that really matters. And so just in the quietness of this room, or maybe you're watching online, you're listening to this podcast, just say something like this to God in your heart. God, I admit to you that I've sinned. God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave for me. Today, I'm coming to you, Jesus. I want to start a relationship with you. 
Come inside of me and transform me now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you would say, Chris, today I made that decision. And we want to know about that. We want to rejoice with you. And so sometime before this service is over, you can just right in front of you, there's a card that says decision on it. Would you be willing to just take that card and fill that out? Tell us the decision you made and and you can put it in the offering basket or just leave it on the seat there. And uh, we would just love to pray with you and rejoice with you on your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're here and, and you'd say, Chris, man, I've been following Jesus for a while. But lately, if I'm honest, I haven't been really listening. Yeah, I've been hearing. I've been coming to church. I hear the stuff, but I haven't really been listening with my heart. I've been pursuing other things. I've been selfish. I don't know what it is for you. But maybe just between you and God now, would you just tell God that? Just tell him. God, I've I've not been listening. Been hearing. I just haven't been listening with my heart. Maybe it's asking God for forgiveness. Just taking some some steps to maybe get back into his word. Whatever God's telling you to do, just listen. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are so gracious, that you are so patient, that you give us truth. You remind us of truth. You love us even when we reject truth and when we, we, we don't listen well. And Lord, I pray that the people in this room, the people that are watching and listening, that their lives would be characterized by the phrase, only God, because they listened and obeyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? Let's praise the Lord.
the time that we set aside each week to worship through giving. Now, if this is your first time here or you're just checking us out, seeing what we're all about, you are in no way obligated to give. In fact, you've tuned in to a gathering of folks who give so generously that you're not obligated to. Now, if you'd like to give online, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. The first is by clicking on the give icon right above me or in the CityWalk app, just click on give at the very bottom and you'll be able to give from there. Now, if during tonight's message, you made a decision to start or re-engage in a relationship with Jesus, we would love to talk to you more because we are so happy and excited for you. All you need to do is just click on that make a decision button right above me, fill out some information and one of us will be in contact with you. I'm so happy that you joined us tonight. I look forward to seeing you next week as we go into chapter five in the book of Mark. And we'll be starting again next week at 6 p.m. at live.citywalknow.com. Look forward to seeing you all there. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.